and welcome to this track on artificial intelligence. My name is Mark Born and I'm working as Senior Director in the Product Management Organization of ANSYS. And I'm very happy to talk to you today on the exciting topic of how we can leverage the power of AI to advance simulation and product engineering in general. Before I dive a bit deeper into the topic, let me recap what we typically consider as AI. The idea of AI is quite old. Actually, it goes back to the roots of computer science. And Alan Turing um, was original publishing on it, giving us the still famous Turing test to distinguish um, what is really an AI. And I remember when I was studying computer science, AI was something where a few guys made a lot of promises, but they showed no real applications. So they were proud to play games like chess or soccer with robots, but they never reached a level where it came close to what we consider today as being AI. So this remains science fiction with no real breakthrough. Um, but we know with the appearance of ChatGPT, um, everyone can feel the difference now and we are really closer to what we consider in real AI. So generally, um, AI, arti artificial intelligence, is anything that mimics human behavior by a computer. So being able to speak, being able to walk, being able to um, solve problems or being creative. So that, that could be um, considered artificial intelligence no matter how it has been achieved. So it's, it's independent of the way how it is programmed. It can be programmed in a set of rules, right? Uh, like in earlier so-called expert systems, or it can be, um, the algorithm can be machine learning. And machine learning is a specific way um, to achieve AI where the computer is able to solve problems which is what which it was not actually being programmed for. So that is um, that is called machine learning. And deep learning, again, is a subset of machine learning where we try to um, use algorithms that come close to how the human brain works using neural networks. And typically this is done in several layers and hence is called deep learning. And the generative AI, which we are all so excited now about, um, is realized um, using um, deep learning. So um, this is um, just a little introduction into what is AI. So um, how does this relate to ANSYS and how could it help us to better serve our customers and their de design processes? As you can see on this uh, picture here, we are on a journey. And this journey led us from the application of multi-physics simulation for validation of products designs that, we, that would require expert knowledge. So really only applicable to simulation experts. And then next step on the journey is pervasive simulation, which leverages integrated workflows that are deployed in the cloud and automated to an extent to be used by developers or engineers that are not necessarily simulation experts anymore. So that can be ordinary developers, ordinary um, designers, but no simulation experts. And the ultimate goal in this journey is a scenario in which there are industry and application specific apps that can be used by anyone who needs to make informed decisions very quickly. And Together with other technologies, AI will significantly help us um, achieving this ultimate goal. And that's why we have introduced the ANSYS five technology pillars where artificial intelligence and machine learning is one of, but not the only one. It works together um, with other technologies like numerics, high performance computing, cloud and experience and digital engineering. And only together, um, they bring us um, closer to um, pervasive insights. With AI, we will be able to achieve a number of things. So we will accelerate our solvers. Um, we will use um, AI technologies to enable digital twins. We use simulation at runtime to predict the future behavior of physical assets actually before it occurs. This requires models that can be solved in real time, and we call them ROMs. 
They can also ease the way of our complex solvers uh, usage, right? Um, by let the machine configure and set up the simulation for the users. Or we can speak uh, natural language and get answers in natural language. So this is also a big step forward for our users. All these are um, potential applications um, of AI technology um, that help us in simulation. And generally, there are different approaches to leverage AI for simulation. First, generic machine learning approaches. With that, we can get fast and accurate predictions for a variety of physics. So this is typically a physical neutral, physics neutral setup. Um, and it needs to be trained on data that is available at our users. There are also, and this is the second thing, there are also specific physics-based approaches where there are pre-trained um, models for high accuracy, but that would work only for a given physics, like a traditional solver, right? And then there are these uh, reduced order models. I mentioned them already. Um, applicable for digital twins, for example, and they can combine simulation and data-driven predictions in what we call uh, hybrid, um, hybrid digital twins. And then there is the application of generative AI for various purposes that I ha have already mentioned. May it be natural language user interface for help and support, generation of scripts, or setting up a simulation and I'm sure that there are many other um, cases um, where this could be applied. So now let's have a look um, what we are already doing at ANSYS. And um, I'm really excited about that. So we have, a, we have our brand new cloud-based AI platform, which is called SimAI. And SimAI can be trained this past simulation data. And then we, we can use it to predict similar models very fast, actually without the need to run a solver. And that works across physics, so it's a generic tool. We have also introduced ANSYS GPT, which is our virtual assistant trained on ANSYS data, and it provides a chat interface for support, documentation, and training. And across our portfolio, there are additional AI technologies that enhance our products, and we call them AI+. Plus. So this is AI technology that comes as an add-on to our um, existing products um, and helps us to achieve uh, additional capabilities. Our customers can be sure that with that approach, we are completely transparent where and how um, we use AI in our products. Each of these topics will be explained in detail by my colleagues later on in their spe specific talks but let me give you um, an overview um, of each of them. Okay, so let's first have a look into SimAI and, uh, and how it really works. Um, so SimAI is a really um, easy product, right? It's, it's, it's really easy to use. And it comes in uh, three simple steps, um, which doesn't look easy on the slide, but it's also easy in reality. So you have to upload um, existing simulation data into it. Um, once you have done that, um, you would train um, the, the prediction model um, with, this, um, uh, with this data. And once uh, the training is done, um, you can simply uh, run, um, give it a new design and um, um, do the predictions in seconds. So what we say with SimAI, it's, um, it's really fast, uh, reliable and accessible. So with fast, we mean that the speed is really a tremendously increased um, comparing to a traditional solver. With reliable, we mean that um, SimAI is able um, to give you a score and that score would indicate you how close um, you are to, um, um, to a solver-based uh, prediction. And accessible really means it's easy to use, it's simple. You just need the simulation data, upload, train, and you can run prediction. It's not an expert um, that is required to do this. Okay, so let's come to the, to the next information on, on SimAI. Um, so we can really unleash the power of AI um, for simulation. It's cloud native, it's based on deep learning, 
Um, there is no parameterization of the genome geometry necessary. You can use that with, without any parameterization and this physic agnostics. So it can work for any 3D simulation data, may it come from ANSYS or not from ANSYS, um, doesn't mind, work for any physics, fluid structures, electromagnetics, optics, and also for different industries. And we are working uh, on more and more use cases where we can show the power of this, um, of this concept for our customers. So in addition um, to SimAI, um, we have ANSYS GPT, which is our virtual assistant trained with ANSYS specific knowledge. It was first announced in July 23 and now released to a number of customers. It provides 24 seven comprehensive technical support. It is deployed using state of the art GPT technology and trained by ANSYS on reliable data. That's the, that's the important thing. So uh, we trained it on our technical documentation. We trained it on our ANSYS innovation courses. We trained it on blog articles and how to videos. And once you get an answer from this uh, GPT, uh, ANSYS GPT, it will point you. It will not only give you the answer, but point you to the source. So you have, it will be uh, references so that you can see um, and follow up on, and um, this makes it so reliable. It also will give you uh, learning content recommendations, and it speaks multiple language if you if, if you want so. So it's it's a multilingual. And last but not least, ANSYS AI Plus. So there are tremendous uh, usage um, of AI technologies across our product for portfolio. And we are releasing that as AI plus add-ons for individual ANSYS products. So for example, we have OptiSlang AI plus. That is use of much machine learning to generate fast prediction models from automated design of experiments. We have Granta MI AI plus, where machine learning is used to generate process properties. Uh, for example, for um, laser based uh, production processes that help to achieve the required material properties. We have CFD AI plus where machine learning allows to tune a gecko turbulence model. And there's more to come. So for example, on the digital twin um, side, I mentioned this hybrid analytics. So also this will be available um, as an AI um, plus add on. So to summarize, we are on an exciting journey towards pervasive insights and AI will play an important role together with ongoing innovations in our other pillar of technologies. Today, we already have SimAI, our machine learning platform for faster insights, which is a true paradigm shift and innovation enabler. We also have ANSYS GPT, our 24 seven virtual assistant, which will evolve um, to include further functionality, um, like for example, being able to uh, generate scripts that um, can be used um, to communicate with our products. And we have ANSYS AI Plus. Um, these are AI augmented add-ons for existing products. The three are already, already available um, and um, there are more to come um, with the next release 24R2. So thank you very much um, for your attention. As said, my colleagues will dive a bit deeper into each of um, uh, into each of these three topics. Um, and thank you for, for staying with us. How do you build a champion? In this era of Formula One, it takes a balance of skill and science, adrenaline and engineering, a passion for disruption, from the design lab to the pit lane, and the drive to not only be faster, but more innovative than the competition. Today we find ourselves an hour's drive north of London, at the home of one motorsport team whose mission is to win, and to do it differently. Join me as we kick off this journey with a peek behind the curtain at one of F1's hottest and most competitive teams. To explore how engineering simulation is helping to unlock a competitive edge, and push the boundaries of what's possible, both on and off track. I'm Miss Emma Walsh, and this is Driven by Simulation. Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> there is no driver here. And more than 90% of the accidents are caused by human error. This can be prevented if we really let the car drive itself. And this is where simulation comes in critically. You could say this is where it all began with one of the most legendary brands in all of motorsport. When they fire up the engine, I feel oh, something difficult to describe. You know, sometimes a dream come true, but the story like my one can happen just uh, with the Ferrari family. Yeah, the reliability of the CFD simulation for the Ferrari Challenge is the, the result of the finely optimized technology. The Ferrari Challenge, the most renowned single mark championship series designed for those whose passion for racing runs as deep as iconic red hues. I'm here in Maranello, Italy, at Enzo Ferrari's famous factory to see firsthand how simulation continues to drive innovation at this house of performance and elegance. If you consider that in the past, the, the total time that you spend to be ready was almost two and a half years. Now, thanks to the simulation, in one year, we are ready. For more than a century, mobility has been the beating heart of human progress connecting us across vast distances, expanding our reach and shaping our daily lives. But today, we stand at a crossroads like never before. With advancements in electrification and sustainable practices, the industry is undergoing a profound transformation, unlocking the future of mobility and driving us towards a world of limitless possibilities. When talking about future mobility, it's really important to be more sustainable, to be more efficient, to reduce energy consumption of vehicles. We literally have six million variants. And how do you validate it? You can't go about testing the six million variants on the roads or, or on our tracks. It's very difficult. We are able to bring this common component together to a very complex system. And it is a fully integrated, efficient, summed up solution the key enabler for us to do modularity is to have good simulation tools. The Indy 500 is a thrilling spectacle that features some of the fastest machines to ever cross the bricks. Each year, it's all about making the cars smaller, lighter and faster, which takes months of advanced planning, design, engineering and, of course, simulation. For us, it's really trying to use simulation to try to understand all these different variables, but also control the variables too, which simulation does very well. Any performance advantage in drag, aerodynamic downforce, any cooling advantages, even things like is the driver comfortable in all those scenarios can make a difference. Join me as we take a peek behind the scenes to find out what enables these champions of speed to compete for glory year after year. So our mission is to just win, and we're responsible for all racing that Honda does in North America. We do a ton of simulations. It's basically like we're putting the car on track without being on track, actually. I'm Isabel Walsh, and this is Driven by Simulation. <laughs>